Well, welcome back to another store picks. You know, typically the store picks are unlike the bourbon hunts. Store picks can include vodka, wine, gin, beer, and even tequila. Well, Habits Bottle Shop had put in a special request. They wanted to show off their tequila section, and we didn't show that in the previous store picks. So tonight, it's a sequel, and it's a sequel all about tequila. Enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to Habits Bottle Shop. Uh, thanks to Bourbon Rider. Thank you, Mike, for coming back and uh, doing this new video. Uh, I know uh, Bourbon Rider is a bourbon group, but I was kind of bothering Mike. I was like, hey, you know, these bourbon drinkers are all about drinking tequila or trying out tequilas na nowadays. So we should do something, uh, and, you know, and, and educate more people, bourbon drinkers, about some tequilas uh, because a lot of tequilas now. Uh, they age their tequilas in, in bourbon barrels and oak barrels and French barrels and cognac barrels and on and on, on and on. And, 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 and that, you know, a lot of the bourbons is aged like that. So um, uh, recently I've, I've, I've had a bunch of my bourbon customers try some tequila and now they're hooked and they, they really enjoy the flavor because they pick up on the oak barrels or the French barrels or bourbon barrels or whatever is aged and they pick it up and, and really enjoy the flavor. Um, so yeah, we, we decided that we're going to do a little uh, thing on tequila today and um, there's a bottle that I'm holding in my hand and, and, and the reason I'm holding this uh, is because they actually say and compare this to the Pappy of tequila. Uh, they call this the Pappy of tequila because this is a very hard bottle of tequila to get. It's called Tears of Lorena. They do a one liter bottle and they do such a small batch because it's extra añejo. It means it's aged for extra long period of time in a bourbon or oak or sherry uh, barrel. So uh, this is uh, batch number three. It means this was aged in three different barrels. Uh, they did a cognac barrel aging and then they took it out of that and put it in a sherry cask and then they took it out of that and did it in a scotch barrel. So this definitely went through some process and this is why they call this the pappy of tequila because it's very hard to get your hands on this. Um, and, 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 you know, we'll, we'll talk more about Añejos and extra Añejo tequila. Um, we'll start with this. Um, first of all, I want to, I want to let you guys know why I have all these stickers, uh, you'll see in my shop. Uh, what this is, is this is, um, a, a sticker that, uh, it's printed out from Tequila Matchmaker. If you guys know what Tequila Matchmaker is, uh, it's a cool website to go on and put in the tequila that you're buying and then they tell you the flavor profile, where it's made, what nom is made. Uh, if you don't know what nom is, we'll get into that in just a minute here. Uh, but they rate the tequila and they're pretty tough. So even if they get, a, let's say a 75 out of 100, it means that tequila is very good, uh, even a 75. So if you see, anything higher or, or lower, don't be afraid. Don't think that it, just because they got a 71 or 72 that it's not that good, it's good. Uh, tequila Matchmaker, it's pretty tough on, on, on uh, uh, rating the, the tequilas that they, they do. But they verify a lot of tequilas, which is additive free. So these stickers that you see, it's, it's confirming that it was, uh, it was approved and, and, and verified by Tequila Matchmaker that that tequila is additive free. Now, the only ones that they're able to say additive free, it's the tequilas that they actually, uh, companies that send, sends in the sample and they test it and do all their testings to make sure that it is actually what they say. And, and if it is, they put a sticker on it. Now, there are a lot of small companies um, that, that do very small batch, like for example, Mi Tierra. Uh, you could find that tequila on there, but this company is so small, that's right now they haven't been, they can't afford to send out sample bottles to these companies and, and to, to rate them. Uh, so therefore this doesn't have the verified tequila matchmaker sticker because tequila matchmaker has not verified this tequila yet. Eventually they will. And, and according to uh, the owners and the supplier of this brand, that this is an additive free tequila, but I'm not just gonna put anything on there if it's not actually verified by tequila matchmaker. So now, we, you know, tequila comes in a few different variants, right? So we got Blanco, Repasado, Añejo, Extra Añejo. And then even in the Blanco, they have what they call the Puntas, which is the high 
uh, yield volume ABV. So if your regular tequila is going to be 40 proof, Puntas is going to be uh, uh, anywhere between 90 to 110, maybe 115 proof. Uh, same thing with Mezcal. If you guys know Mezcal, Mezcal has also become a, a big uh, a brand or big category in its own uh, uh, category now. Uh, very smoky. Uh, if you like smoky stuff, you'll definitely enjoy Mezcal. Uh, it's becoming a big demand. Um, and we've also introduced a new category, and it's called Ricea. So it's not tequila, it's not Mezcal, it's Ricea. It's agave-based. Uh, used to be called the moonshine of Mexico because it was illegal to distill this for the longest time. But just recently it was uh, approved by the Mexican government and they gave them a small space in Jalisco, Mexico to grow this agave and, and make it into Ricea. So yes, uh, as you can see, I'm a big fan of agave product, tequila product, mezcal product. Uh, we could probably talk about it all day, but we're just going to go down and, and kind of introduce some good stuff that's out in the market right now. Uh, sad to say, I used to be a big fan of Casa Amigos uh, when George Clooney and, and, and uh, Mr. Gerber owned it, but sad to say this is not an additive free tequila anymore, uh, just because when they sold the company, the company that bought them couldn't keep up with the demand, and so now they have to add additives to uh, make it to where it is. Although you go to a lot of nice bars, they have that. If I don't see anything that, that's additive free or something that I'm looking for, I will still drink that. But, you know, it's, uh, the additive free is the, is the new market now. Uh, a lot of people have heard of Lalo, grandson of uh, original uh, Don Julio that, that started the Don Julio company, the brand. And when it was sold, the family kind of fell off for a while. Now he got a grandson that comes in and only thing he makes is the Blanco tequila. That's all he spends his time and, and, and concentration on making just the Blanco tequila. Uh, he doesn't have the, the, the uh, proper stuff to age and barrels. He doesn't want to get into it because you could just go on and on. Are they, they have two different types of tequilas. They have your everyday more affordable uh, and it's like you get a Repasado for $33.99, 100% additive free. Blanco, Reposado, both additive free. I mean, their whole lineup is additive free. You got their single state where they have, uh, uh, like they use the Highland, uh, Jalisco grown agave, and you got their Blanco, you got their Repo, Añejo, and Extra Añejo. Um, this, I, I, I compare a lot to people that come in here to buy a bottle of Clase Azul, which everybody knows about this bottle. Uh, they use ceramic, makes it look really pretty. Got a little bell on the cap. It's very hyped up, a lot of stars, a lot of actors, actresses, rappers, everybody's using it to drink it and it's very hyped up, but it's not an added free tequila. I mean, you know, money is yours, how you wanna spend it. You come to me, I'm gonna be like, no, skip on that. Get you, get you Arte Rey Pasado, $65 and I guarantee you'll never drink that tequila again. You got brands like Mijenta, Cascajen, Cascajanes, uh, you got Tequila Ocho, uh, El Tesoro. This is why I have put all these tags so it'll let my, my customers that walk in here know they don't have to waste any time on getting on the app or anything. You know, it's there for you. I've already done the work for you, save you some time. You'll feel comfortable on buying tequilas because I've personally have tried a lot of these tequilas. I could say 95% of the tequilas that we carry, I've tried and, and, and I could talk to you about it and let you know uh, if it's sweet or if it's caramel, vanilla, wh whatever uh, it is, I could probably talk about it. Um, here's another reason why I told Mike <clears throat> about we should do a, uh, a little uh, episode on tequila. So Corazon does this amazing tequila barrel aid stuff. And yes, you see this correctly. It says W.L. Weller bourbon barrels, E.H. Teller, uh, E.H. Taylor bourbon barrels and they have buffalo trace bourbon barrels they have stag uh they so they get all these barrels from buffalo trace and they actually put their tequila in there and age it bourbon lovers really enjoy this tequila because now you get to try a new category which is tequila and then you also get to flavor uh, uh taste some of uh, bourbon notes uh in, in that tequila so you really enjoy it um <clears throat> so that's a very good one Volans is another very good additive-free tequila. Uh, Siete Laguas has a pretty cool story. 
the master distiller was originally distilling for Patron, uh, and then they separated their ways, and one got to keep the brand Patron, the other one started their own. Uh, oh, that uh, is that is yeah. interesting. So if you if you want to ever try the original Patron recipe, you try Siete Laguas, which is uh, I believe stands for seven days, um, and uh, and and. Their stuff is very good, additive-free. Unfortunately, you can't say that about Patron anymore. They're not additive-free. So we're going to move on. We got uh, a, lot of, a lot of famous stars that are behind product now. Uh, this is one of them. Your famous Rock, uh, Dwayne Rock Johnson, uh, famous, famous wrestler and a movie star. Uh, he's got his hands behind that. You got a comedian, um, uh, Kevin Hart, uh, standing behind Grand Caramino. Uh, you already know about Casa Amigos. It was George Clooney and uh, Gerber, and we got a lot of other brands in here. Deleon is it's uh, uh, Sean Combs or Puff Daddy's uh, uh, tequila that he stands behind. Um, <clears throat> so we got uh, and 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 tequila. It's just like bourbon. You could buy a good twenty dollar bottle, or you could buy a good two thousand dollar bottle. And, and, and there's everything in between. It's, it's, it's what you want to spend. The only good thing with the tequila uh, is that it's, it's when it comes to additive. So additive is such a big deal. And if those of you that don't know what additive means, they're adding colors and different flavors to bring it up to that level of how it was originally made, which according to some customers of mine, additives also gives you a bigger and badder hangover the next day. Oh, which, not good. You know, not good, right? So now... Uh, that's why the additive free word has become huge in the tequila world and uh, uh, people tend to go after additive free tequila because they want to drink the whole bottle but they don't want the hangover the next day. Well, an mm -hmm. answer me this, right? Uh, explain aging in tequila because a lot of people with bourbon understand the bourbon ages. How is tequila aged? What is the minimum aging for tequila? Or is there a so, so a lot of it is pot distilled, right? Uh, like Blanco. So all tequila comes out Blanco. Uh, so Blanco means it comes out clear when, when it's distilled from the fresh agave, when the whole process, roll mill process and everything is done, it comes out Blanco. Now, in order for you to go from Blanco to Rey Pasado, it has to be aged a minimum of six months in a Rey Pasado, uh, in an oak barrel. In, a, in, a, in a either a, a pre-used bourbon barrel or an oak barrel or whatever barrel that you want to use, it has to be aged at least a minimum of six months or longer to get it to this color. And then to, to, to be a añejo, it has to be, I believe, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, it's 12 months, uh, 12 months or longer. And then they do extra añejo, which is 18 months or longer to get it to those different categories of, of, of their distilled do we, product. Do we assume the darker it is, the, the, how the flavor would change? The flavor definitely changes because uh, the darker it gets is because it's been aged that much longer, so it attracts the, the barrel color into the tequila. Uh, that's the same thing you do with uh, a lot of scotch. Scotch, you age in barrels uh, for long periods of time to, to get rid of that peatiness, and the tequila right. world is the same thing. Um, when, when it's a Blanco, it's like a bite. To, to it because it's fresh agave, right? It's, right? it's juice from the fresh distilled agave. And then when you age it, it, it tends to lose that bite a little bit and it becomes more smoother, so more sipping. Uh, you could just either put it on ice and, and sip on it or just, you know, I usually like to just put the bottle in the freezer and take it out and just drink it neat. And that's how I enjoy my tequila. Uh, you could, you know, you might like it different. You might like it on ice. And of course, when the ice dilutes, it, it, it you know, opens up a little more flavor. But again, the tequila, you might lose some touch of flavoring and stuff. Um, so and there's a lot of similarities of how you would drink tequila and how you would drink bourbon. Yeah, yeah, there is. And that's why, uh, that's why a lot of the bourbon drinkers are liking the, the, the aged tequilas because it involves a lot of uh, oak barrels, a lot of uh, bourbon barrels. And it, it attracts the flavoring from those barrels. So now you get best of both worlds, kind of. And gotcha. you get a little flavoring profile difference uh, of tequila, of agave. Um, <clears throat> there's other tequilas that are very, like Arte Nom. It's like the godfather Nom. So let me tell you a little bit about Nom. Nom is the area. It is the, the, the region uh, where that tequila is made. Every region is going to have a different number. Every bottle of tequila, you could pick out any bottle of tequila and it's gonna have a nom on there. 
So this tequila was made at NOM 1146. So you can pick up any tequila and, and by Mexican law, it has to have the NOM number on there to let you know, because let's say 1146, let's say it has a uh, pepper taste or caramel taste. So, and if you really enjoy that, you're gonna go now to whatever tequila brand you want and you're gonna see if it's made from that same NOM and from that same area, because you're gonna get very similar flavoring profile from that agave. Because that agave is it's, it's, it's born and raised in that section of, of, of Mexico. Kind of like Kentucky bourbon versus other state other, bourbons. Exactly. Like you could pretty much compare it. Uh, Kentucky bourbon is considered would be one nom and then Tennessee whiskey would be another nom. Wyoming whiskey would be another nom. Gotcha. Uh, you know, Minnesota whiskey would be another nom and on and on and on and on. And now that you know what nom means and, you know, different areas of Mexico that these agaves are grown, uh, you, you could try uh, some of these noms and, and see what fits your flavor profile. And so next time you go and you feel like you want that profile of flavor, you get that nom tequila. Um, Don Fulano, uh, also, you know, very nice additive free tequila, gets very high ratings. And like I was saying earlier, tequila goes, uh, you know, from $15, $20 to $2,000. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this brand here, uh, Pueblo Viejo. Small company originally started, uh, they do uh, $15.99 for a bottle of Rey Pasado. It is not an additive free tequila, but if you're trying to mix, uh, make margaritas, or if you're on a budget and you just want to sip something, this for $15.99 or their Añejo for $19.99, you're not going to waste your money. You're going to enjoy this tequila. Uh, all those additive free, I really don't like pushing non-additive uh, tequilas, but for, for bang for the buck, that's that's pretty good. Uh, again, we have your your uh, uh, low shelf tequila all the way up to uh, high shelf, top shelf tequila, and and tequila game is huge. Uh, a lot of aging involved, a lot of love and hard dedication is involved. Uh, there's a lot of uh, smaller companies like this one, La Gritana, all women owned company, uh, from uh, anywhere from actually uh, planting the agave, from picking the agave, from distilling the agave, from bottling it, and all the way to the delivery part. It's all done by a woman. They only make this Rey Pasado tequila, and you've probably seen this bottle. A lot of bars carry it, a lot of people support it. It is excellent tequila. A little peppery right off the top, but it settles in and very enjoyable. You can sip it, take shots, mix it, whatever you want to do. It's excellent, and you will not regret spending $45 on that tequila to get. Um, uh, again, sometimes they say do not judge the book by its covers. Uh, this is called Tapatio. No, it is not owned by the hot sauce company. This is Tapatio. It's out of Mexico. Uh, uh, they don't spend too much money on, on uh, expensive bottles or expensive labeling, but a very, very high rated uh, tequila. They any Anything you pick from there, they're, they're uh, Blanco, Reposado or Añejo, it's excellent. You would love it. Uh, guys, thank you very much. Mike, thank you for coming in here and, and giving me an opportunity to talk tequila. I know I've been bothering you about it. And uh, tequila has definitely become the, the next go-to after bourbon. Uh, it definitely surpassed the vodka industry. Uh, people are more and more getting into tequila, which is a good thing. Uh, and uh, I hope you guys come by and uh, give us an opportunity to do some business together and we'll talk you into a nice tequila bottle. Absolutely. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks, guys.